This is tugs. These are tugs. This is the clean definition of tugging. And here are some small recreations of some of the buildings used in tugs. A few years ago, Harry modelled some of the Starfleet based on the Ertl designs of Ten Cents and Sunshine. And Top Hat, I guess. And he asked if I could make some of the buildings from the show to go with them. All these models are made from Dalla Rowney 1mm thick mount board and thinner cardstock. Have you got your ticket? <laughs> Coffee stirrers and corrugated card are also used. Firstly, we have the uh, demolition factory from upriver. Can't do Warrior's voice. Naturally, I had to make it both as a demolition factory and as a demolished factory. I cut out a square near the top of the front and back walls and used thin card to make a grate over them. To make it look like it was in its last days, I poked several holes in the corrugated card roof and built the doors on a very empty frame. This meant that with cut up coffee stirrers I could position them at angles and leave gaps to show where the wood was rotten. The whole thing was then sprayed grey, then beaten up with various dark acrylics. The doors were stuck in place using black tape on the inside so that they could be swung into position. In the original episode, they use a quick cut to change between the two forms of the building. So using these same measurements, I made a wooden frame out of more coffee stirrers. I like coffee. Gaps were deliberately left and various scraps of card added on and painted black to show where the walls had been burned through. Next up is the EJ Lab factory seen in High Tide. So called because it's an anagram of Pagel, which means absolutely nothing at all. I made it up. It was probably an inside joke for the crew members or something. Here's the walls being measured out. Apparently I was visited by a glowing angel when these photos were taken. The tall chimney was made with a drinking straw with card wrapped around it. After painting, it was tied down with string and some posters from the 1920s were put on the walls for good measure. Sunshine! Round the front, the big letters were painted in blue on the doors. Who likes melons? I like melons. Here's a big melon building and some milk to go with it because, well, there's a melon and a milk building in high tide, okay? Okay. Again, these are two basic house-shaped structures with the windows and doorways framed with matchsticks. Oh, and coffee stirrer sticks are back, this time being layered to show the warp damage caused from where the wood wasn't protected. Always protect your wood. Similarly to the roof, square pieces of card were then stuck with square pieces of sandpaper to give a rough look. Like me when I don't get my coffee, my melons and my milk. Don't make me angry. The Melon Produce Company building had matchstick doors made, whilst the Milk Hut had a corrugated one. Why is there a Milk Hut under a shady bridge along an industrial canal? Uh, hmm. The text was painted freehand like a rebel, and the wood dusted up with grey and brown acrylics. Oh, I forgot the bananas. Melons, milk, bananas. Okay, I'm only now just connecting the dots about the amusing background buildings of Tugs. Hmm. Makes me more concerned for whatever EJ Lap means. Um, anyway, to make this building look run down, I caved in the roof slightly before adding the tiles. Though I definitely overdid it with the caving in because it looks like a banana. Or maybe that was deliberate. I, I, I can't remember. Same thing again with the wooden walls and corrugated doors like before. You can see the difference that adding sandpaper to the roof makes. I'm realising there's a lot of wooden buildings in the old docks of Big City. It would be catastrophic if there was a fire. Oh dear. Slap a good old San Juan banana sign on the wall and you're ready to illegally evade customs. These are custom buildings after all. Finally, a building to cleanse the dirty downtown world of Tugs, the Uptown Church, 
where all of the uptown girls live in their uptown world. A craft knife was used to cut out the curved windows, and a chimney-like structure glued up on the roof. And another one with holes in it. Then another one, but now smaller. Then a little pyramid for the spire. Then at last, a little cross to make the religious folk happy. I must have been working on these day and night without stopping, because there's a can of Febreze at play. Last building now, and in my opinion the best of the lot, the LT building. I, again, I don't know what that means, I don't want to know. <laughs> it helped having reference photos to hand of the prop itself. But other than that, it's the same techniques I used on the earlier models. The walls, the doors and the roof. The posters and signs used on the walls are prints directly from the original. And for the other side, I made a freelance design with blue doors just so this building could be used in several locations. All these buildings are smaller than the usual 00 ones I make, so that they would fit better with the Ertl tugs. But even then, I think they're quite overscaled. There's a little bundle of buildings from Tugs. Back in the day, I used to make quite a few models from the show. Like this little crane made entirely from matchsticks. Or this smokestack that's made from a Bunsen burner that I must have... borrowed from school. Then, of course, there's Big Mickey, which I've made three times. And you can see a video of how I made the old one here. Let me know if you'd like a narrated version of how I made the later two. This was Tugs. A big thank you to all of my brilliant patrons. Alex Goodman, GBH Train, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Nat, Alco, Random Thomas Fan, Peter Davenport, Ego, Kildane's Coven, and Insane Edward.